So today I'm going to start lecture 16 on our helicopter dynamic series. This lecture is going to be about blade flapping motion. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now essentially when we are looking to model any kind of blade in a rotating system, flapping motion or out of plane motion is the simplest possible motion you can get. Later we are going to add more degrees of freedom to this motion. But today we are going to start with the basic blade flapping. And in this, the simplest model is rigid blade flapping. And essentially the rigid blade means that we are not considering the possibility of blade bending. So again, that would require us to use beam theory. And we are going to discuss the beam theory type of model in a later lecture. So as of today, we are only going to consider rigid blade flap, which is the simplest model you can get for a rotor blade. So rigid blade dynamics, if you recall from your college or high school days, means that we consider mass of the system, but essentially there is no stiffness in the system. So that is essentially what is known as rigid blade motion. So let us look at a schematic of the typical rigid blade. So here you have this blade here, and it is rotating around this point, the hub. And we are considering a very small mass here. So if the mass per unit length of the blade is m, then the mass of this section is going to be m into dr, where dr is a small length in this direction. r is the distance to this point here, you can see here. And z is the distance here from the line given here. Beta is the flap angle. So this is what we mean by flapping motion. Essentially, the blade moves in this direction, and that is the flapping motion. Now, some things come to us from geometry. We will basically assume beta is small to get the equations, because if you do not assume that, then you get a lot of trigonometric terms and so on, which we are going to not consider at this point. So you can straight away get one equation that z equals beta r. So z equals beta into r, which is essentially valid in this kind of situation. Now on this mass, there are going to be three forces. There's going to be a centrifugal force acting in this direction. There's going to be an inertia force acting in this direction and a aerodynamic force acting in this direction. So the cumulative effect of these three masses is going to dictate the behavior of this particular blade. So this is the simplest type of flapping which we can consider. We have considered flap hinge is located at the hub and beta is the angle of flap. We also saw that the out of plane deflection is Z equals beta into R and we have also assumed beta to be a small angle, so sine beta is beta, cos beta is 1, tan beta is beta. These essentially let us write simple, simple equations for this particular problem. So now let us try to figure out the forces which act on this small mass here. So let's start with the inertia force, which we will call as IF. So that is going to be m dr into z double dot. So that being the z here, and it's going to be in the reverse direction of the direction of motion of the blade beta. Now, we know z is beta into r. So this becomes r beta double dot. Now, there is a moment arm. So we are going to take moment at the flap hinge here. So the moment arm of this is going to be r, which means this is the force here and the distance is approximately r. Remember, we are assuming small beta here, so all the cos beta terms are going to become 1. Now the next force acting is the centrifugal force, and that is m dr into r into rotation speed square. So that's the mass here m dr into the distance r into rotation square. And this is going to act in this direction radially outwards. And the moment arm is now going to be this distance z 
and that is r into beta now aerodynamic force is fz into dr so that's in this direction here okay so fz is the force per unit length so we multiply that by dr and so we get the force in this direction again moment arm in this case is equal to r again we are presuming small angles so now what we are going to do is we are going to take these three forces and take the moment at the flap hinge and we know that if we were to take the moment at the flap hinge from zero to r then that should be zero so essentially we take for example the first force here we multiply the by that by the moment arm r we take the next force here the centrifugal force we multiply that by the moment arm r beta we take the third force here and the moment arm r and then we take this entire thing integrate from zero to r and set it equal to zero so the net result of this is i can bring out the terms which involve beta here and beta double dot and I can take the term which doesn't involve beta to the right hand side, which is the forcing term. So this is the equation of motion which we get. And m r squared dr is common to both these terms, so I can bring it out here. So that was the equation we got. And now we define IB as the flap moment of inertia i think we have already defined it before in a previous lecture as zero to r m r squared dr a very important term in rotor dynamics now with this definition i can replace this by ib and so this is the governing equation of motion for flapping blade or we will also often call it as the flap equation now if you look at it closely and compare it with our spring mass system knowledge you clearly see that there is a mass oriented term here and then there is a stiffness oriented term here and comparing with the stiffness oriented terms we can clearly see that the natural frequency of this blade is going to be the rotation speed of the blade itself so that's something very interesting which comes out from this flapping equation is that the stiffness is coming from the rotation of the blade itself the stiffness term comes from rotation and if you go back at the derivation and see this is actually coming from the centrifugal force term so again let us look at this equation now this equation is typically expressed in terms of time t but in rotor dynamics typically psi is used in place of time t we already know that so the flapping equation is expressed in terms of psi and that's something we are going to now do in the next few slides so to do that we start at the definition itself so psi is rotation speed into time so if we differentiate with respect to time we get the rotation speed so now we take this flapping equation expressed in terms of time t and what we need to do is we need to get beta double dot in terms of psi so instead of d2 beta by d t square which is here we need to express this in terms of psi so to do that first we get d beta by dt using the chain rule we get d beta by d psi into d psi by dt so this term becomes rotation speed and the next term is d beta by d psi now we take the second derivative here so essentially again we have rotation speed and then we differentiate with respect to t so we get this term here and now from this definition here we get a rotation speed square into d2 beta by d psi 2 so essentially this is the transformation relationship between the derivative of beta with respect to time and the derivative of beta with respect to psi and we are going to substitute this term into the equation for flap here and put it as beta double dot so we take our beta double dot equation we take our representation of this beta double dot terms in terms of beta 
with respect to psi and we put it so that's the term we get now the advantage of this is now you have a rotation squared term on both these terms here so I can bring this term to the right hand side and divide it and I get this neater looking equation in this form now typically in rotor dynamics we refer to d beta by d psi using star so whenever we use star it means the differentiation is with respect to psi and not with respect to beta beta is t so when we differentiate with respect to t we put the dot and when we differentiate with respect to psi we put the star so that's our final governing equation and we also are going to put this right hand side in terms of the log number so we are going to do that so again you can express this in terms of log number and m beta bar which is then going to give you these two parameters here so essentially some multiplication and divisions are required to express in this form and you can check it out so just to summarize that was our equation in time the flapping equation and this is our equation in psi which is also time but in a different form and this is gamma coming here and this is m beta bar coming here so interestingly gamma being dependent on rho the density of air if we set gamma equal to zero that means we get the response of this system in vacuum and so this is the m beta bar where all the aerodynamic forces which act on the blade are coming in through this f z term so this moment you can express in this form like i discussed before rho is air density a is the lift curve slope c is chord and r is the rotor radius log number gamma represents the ratio of the inertia forces to the aerodynamic forces now typically values of log number range from 5 to 10 and we also saw that the natural frequency of the blade is now one which is one more way of saying it is omega but this one per rev is the non-dimensional rotation typically used for this problem so essentially instead of saying it is rotation speed radian per second we say it is one per rev so that is the notation which is very common in rotorcraft dynamics that one per rev simply means it is at the rotation speed 2 per rev means it is twice the rotation speed 3 per rev means it's three times the rotation speed and so on so let's recapitulate this is our governing equation so now knowing the spring mass system we clearly see that mass equals one we see that stiffness equals one and the force is given by gamma m beta bar beta is the flapping motion this is actually a single degree of freedom system in flap we also could write our natural frequency as the rotation speed radian per second so the flapping rigid blade can be illustrated as a spring mass system and the force which acts on this blade can be motion dependent and this is discussed later in the subject in fact i would say this m beta bar is a very important term and in fact a lot of the problems in prediction in rotor dynamics comes because the forcing is hard to predict so that's where the fluid dynamics people have to come in so the flapping rigid blade is like a rotating string with a mass at the tip and this string stretches outwards due to the centrifugal force and therefore the natural frequency of this string is equal to the rotational frequency so that's a comparison with which you can think to visualize the flapping motion we also saw a very important aspect that spring stiffness of this particular flapping blade was entirely due to the centrifugal force and centrifugal stiffening is the key physical phenomena in the flapping blade if we presume that there is no stiffness in the system still we are getting a stiffness due to the blade flapping and because of that we are also getting a frequency of the system 
So that's a very interesting conclusion which comes out of this simple model of a flapping blade with the hinge at the root. So in the next lecture, I'm going to expand this to include the offset hinge condition, which is more realistic. And we will meet again in the next video. See you then.